Good evening, White Marsh. I'd like to call our Township Board of Supervisor meeting for September 8th, 2022, 7 p.m., about five after, to order. Uh, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, announcements. Uh, thanks, Laura. Pico gas main work is scheduled to continue on Butler Pike between Cole Point Road and Stenton Avenue between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. This project is expected to reach completion in early December. The annual Touch a Truck event will be held at Miles Park Lower Lot on Saturday, September 24th. The event begins at 11 a.m. and there is a $2 attendance fee for those age two and older. The Eat and Enjoy Senior Social Series event will take place on Thursday, September 15th. Pre-registration is required, so please contact the Parks and Recs Department at 610-828-7276 or RSVP on the Township website. The William Jeans Memorial Library's annual book sale will take place this weekend, Saturday, September 10th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Books for all ages, CDs, and other media are available for purchase. All proceeds help fund enhanced library programs. Masks are required, and the event is cash only. No checks are accepted. That's it. Thanks, Fran. So tonight we have before us a public hearing. Uh, so I'm excited to take the next step in this process. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing for the acquisition of open space at 4006 Butler Pike, Corson Property, Abolition Hall, in accordance with the Open Space Act requirement? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Boilmaster. I am going to go ahead and explain some of the process. This is not uh, a public hearing as you're accustomed to uh, for the MPC for zoning or conditional use. This is merely meeting the requirements under Act 153. But nevertheless, we're going to do the following. I'm going to go ahead and mark some exhibits. I'm going to ask some questions of Mr. Miller and perhaps Mr. Guttenplan. Uh, the board will have an opportunity uh, for some questions. The public will have an opportunity to comment. Um, and then uh, the, the board can either continue this public hearing to another time or close the public hearing and take action. So I'm going to go ahead and, and mark some exhibits uh, for the record. Uh, T1 will be a, a, the proposed ordinance authorizing and approving the fee of the simple acquisition of 4006 Buffalo Pike, parcel number 65-00123406 for open space benefits. T2 will be a proof of publication in the Times Herald dated uh, August 25th, 2022 and September 1st, 2022. T3 will be a uh, map of the property, praise 19, uh, page 19 of the uh, appraisal report dated September 21st, 2020 by Higgins and Welsh appraisers. T4 will be the White Marsh Township Resolution 2012-26 um, amending open space plan, encouraging preservation of historic properties in Cold Point and Plymouth Meeting Historic Districts by acquiring and or preserving same as open space. Uh, T5 will be the White Marsh Township Resolution 2013-15, amending open space uh, plan, including listed the Hubbard House, the Barn and Abolition Hall, and priority open space opportunities. Um, T6 will be the White Marsh Township Resolution 2013-29, amending the open space plan, placing all priority open space opportunities into priority open space opportunities category. And T7 will be a, the White Marsh Township Selective Comprehensive Plan Update 2020, uh, map showing parks and open space character, uh, page 30. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, before uh, we, we uh, open this up to questions, uh, because Mr. Miller, the, the township manager, has uh, been very familiar with this acquisition, uh, has some knowledge, 
uh, we thought rather than having him read uh, a long statement, I would merely do this more in a question and answer kind of format. Mr. Miller will, uh, I'll ask some questions, Mr. Miller will answer, and then we can go from there if the board and or the public needs some more uh, information. Um, so the questions are as follows. Uh, where is uh, where is the parcel located that the Act 153 funds will be used to acquire? The street address uh, is 4006 Butler Pike, Montgomery County. Uh, tax parcel number 65-00-01234-00-6. And how much open space funds will be used uh, towards this acquisition? It'll be an amount not to exceed $2 million. And what interest will the township have in property through the use of these funds? It'll be a fee, simple interest shared jointly with the White Marsh Art Center. How much is the sale price of the property? It'll be $3,950,000. Uh, how will the remainder of the purchase price be paid uh, above the amount of the township's contribution? The remainder of the sale price will be contributed by the White Marsh Art Center due to the generous donation made to the Art Center for this purchase by the Carabots Foundation. And uh, what portion of the property will be acquired with Act 153 funds? The Act 153 funds will only be used to acquire the open space on the property. The art center contribution will go towards the buildings on the property, including the residential house located on Marple Lane and its surrounding lot. There may be a subdivision of Marple Lane House off from the rest of the open space, and the portion of the property that is included in the subdivided lot will not be part of the property acquired from Act 153 funds. And that's uh, depicted in what's been marked as T3, the map of the property, which is page 19 of the appraisal report. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, so will any of the structures be purchased with the Act 153 funds? No, that is why the Marple Lane House may be subdivided and transferred, and the Hovenant House will be used by the Art Center. However, through the use of the Act 153 funds to purchase the open space, Township and the Art Center are able to ensure the historical preservation of Abolition Hall. Uh, why is the property being acquired in part with Act 153 funds? Property is being acquired for open space benefits for the Township, including the protection of planned <coughs> passive recreation and conservation sites, protection and conservation of natural and, and scenic resources, protection of scenic areas for public visual enjoyment from public rights of way, preservation of historic sites, interest, and the promotion of sound, cohesive, and efficient land development by preserving open space between communities. Okay. On the comprehensive plan thing, is it better to direct this to Drew or Mr. Gutton plan, or do you have a preference to that? I, I think we could just go, go through them. Go through them, and okay. if Mr. Gutton plan can, needs that, anything he can. Okay. And, and uh, is the acquisition and use of the property in, in accordance with the township's comprehensive plan? Short answer, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and let's go through the exhibits to say how. Um, okay. We had, we had a series of exhibits. We went ahead and, uh, and, and uh, marked. Hold on a second. Can I maybe make yeah, a, su go through. a suggestion here? Yeah. As we go through some of these, um, in our open space plan, a lot, a lot of them have to do with the historic nature of the area and obviously of the property. Um, the first one being amending our open space plan, encouraging preservation of historic properties in Colm Point and Plymouth Meeting Historic Districts. Obviously this it's property is, is in there. Um, amending open space plan including property listed as Hovenant House Barn and Abolition Hall in priority open space opportunities. That, that and that's T5. Required. Amending open space plan, placing all priority open space opportunities, non-acquisition properties into priority open space opportunities, which this property is now priority. And then White Marsh Township Selective Comprehensive Plan Update 2020 map showing parks and open space character area of which this property is included. So 2013-29 amending open space plan for all priority open space opportunities was T6 and T7 was the White Marsh Township Select Comprehensive Plan uh, update that you just uh, that you just talked about. Correct. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, what are the benefits of the open space to the public? 
In addition to preserving the natural resources of the property as open space, the historic nature of the property for the public's benefit, the township intends to maintain the open space as passive recreation for the public's benefit. However, the township still intends to involve the public and receive public feedback related to the use within these parameters. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mellor, the township manager. Uh, we just wanted to, we went through all the specifications required of an open space hearing under Act 153, and we believe those have been met uh, with his testimony. Just wanted to see if the board had any questions. Thank you. Definitely exciting to take this to the next step. Um, before we open it up to the public, does the board have any questions at the moment? Okay, I'd like to invite the public up for any questions. Come on up. Good evening, Sidel Zove, Hearts Ridge Road. This is a great moment in the history of this township, um, in the history of this um, very special homestead. Uh, I do have uh, just a couple of questions about the mechanics of this purchase. Um, the resolutions that were adopted and referenced as uh, ex exhibits <coughs> refer to Hovenden House, Abolition Hall, and the barn. <coughs> But the documents, the resolution, and the and the and Rick, your cover memo refer to the Hovenden House, Abolition Hall, and the main house. It's one and the same. I think it's been called a couple different things for reference purposes, but it it is the same. The main house building. and the barn. They're the same building. The same building. The same building. Okay. Correct. And the is there any possibility that um, the map that was referenced on page 19 of the 2020 appraisal could be put on display? Because I have some questions about the possible subdivision. Can you put that up, please? If that's okay with the board, if the board's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you need to enable screen sharing, please. I do. <laughs> Would you like to see it? I'm seeing it. <laughs> Should come up in a second. Should. Do you want me just to orient everybody that's looking at this? Sure. Um, this is Butler Pike along the top, Germantown Pike along the left-hand side. The entire parcel, including the buildings that have been discussed, is outlined in this light yellow. And again, just for orientation, this area down here, known as, or pointing out as Lot B, is the um, house on Marple Lane for reference. So my question is uh, uh, primarily about uh, the Marple Lane property, um, Lot B. Um, if there is to be a future subdivision, is is this the line? Is this the configuration as shown here, or we, we don't know? That okay. That has not been determined. Okay, so it's it's not absolutely linked to or dependent on this 2020. Uh, plan. No. Okay. Would there be any further subdivision? For example, lots A and C as drawn here, which differentiate the open space, roughly eight acres, from the area around the Hovenden House, which is lot A. Is it the intention of the township and or the art center to create that subdivision? It is not. It's not been addressed in any of the documents. Okay. And, and so the use of the township open space dollars, not to exceed $2 million, um, would be used toward the purchase, but not dependent on a, a subdivision that separates the open space from the remaining property. The, the subdivision is a maybe. 
It's always been listed as a, it's not contemplated as it will absolutely happen. The subdivision of lot of Marple Lane. Marple property. Lane. Okay. So but, none of that has been determined to this date. But the acquisition is not dependent on dividing the open space from um, the Hovenden House. It is parcel. not. The, the the acquisition will be for the entire property. Okay. Um, and um, when do you expect that um, acquisition settlement will actually occur? Good question. <laughs> um, we would probably anticipate that'll happen sometime in the fall. Um, a lot of dates are specific. The money from the Carabots Foundation has to come in by a certain date, and then we would have to settle from that date. We have 60 days to settle on the property. So uh, my, my best estimation would be before the holidays, um, probably <coughs> mid-November at the latest. Okay. Um, it could occur before that. We have not selected a, a date uh, for the closing as of yet. And with regard to the use of the spaces, that the structures uh, and the open space, um, I'm a little confused about who occupies what. The art center definitely occupies the Hovenden House. That's correct. That's and the have. main house slash barn, what becomes of that? To be determined. All of that will have to be determined. That's where, when I mentioned in my testimony, <clears throat> that there'll be a lot of public input. Um, obviously, the board will have input on that as well. Um, but the idea is for it to be open to the public. Um, and open to the public, just like the Art Center is a nonprofit, they have public events. Um, the idea is to open the property to the public in some form or fashion. What that looks like, to be determined. Will the, uh, will the Art Center occupy any portion of Abolition Hall on a permanent basis? Abolition Hall, um, again, to be determined. None of that has been determined yet. And the, who will manage this property? Who will? All of that, the, the next step in this entire process is for the township to enter into a covenant agreement with the Art Center, the mm -hmm. White Marsh Art Center. And that covenant agreement will spell out um, the interests um, the maintenance, um, how all of that will look to answer probably many of your questions and the public questions. Uh, once we have that document, that document has to be approved publicly. Um, so that is one of the next steps so that those interests are clearly defined going forward. Do you anticipate that the Art Center would occupy any portion of the buildings prior to that document being finalized? There are still people that live on that property, right. and after closing, there will still be people in accordance with the agreement of sale living on that property. Okay. Um, and I had one other question. Um, I did read the inspection reports that were done during the township's due diligence period, and clearly the structures need attention. There's a lot of deferred maintenance. Is there any intention on the part of the township to undertake a conditions assessment, a thorough conditions assessment as a prelude to a master plan, uh, assembling a master plan? Uh, we're certainly not there yet. All of those things will have to be discussed. I'm sure uh, the board will want to do that in the future. Um, they're historic, they're old. We shouldn't be surprised that there's right. a lot of issues uh, right. that need to be addressed with the property. The oldest part of the Hovenden House uh, dates to the 1760s, so yes, they are old. Yes, they are. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for all of your efforts, for your enthusiasm, for your vision uh, and persistence. Um, this is a great, great moment, and um, I couldn't be more pleased. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public comments okay do I have a motion to close this public hearing so moved second all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries and so let's go down to our ordinances do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 1015 authorizing the open space acquisition in accordance with the White Marsh Township Home Rule Charter at 4006 Butler Pike in the amount not to exceed $2 million? So moved. Second. Not a roll call. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. McCusker. Yes. Ms. Toll. Yes. Ms. Tureen. Yes. 
Mr. Manuel? Yes. Chair Nestor? Wholeheartedly, yes. Thank you. On to even four more, less exciting actually, <laughs> approval of our minutes. Do I have a motion to adopt the meeting minutes of August 11th, 2022? So, so moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. And we have a couple discussion items tonight. The first is the review of the 2021 financial statement with Zelenovsky Axelrod LLC. Thank you, Chair Nestor. Uh, we have representatives from our new auditing firm, Zinolovsky and Axelrod, here to review the 2021 financial statement. Uh, this is a best management practice to have the financial statement reviewed publicly. Uh, once it is reviewed, the board will be asked to accept the 2021 uh, financial statement. And as we've done for many years in the past, that will also be posted on our uh, website. So uh, with that, um, Kevin, I don't know if you want to introduce the folks here, our finance director, Kevin Barron, and um, we'll have them come up who's presenting. Thanks. I told Kevin he could stay sitting, but I just want to say when you said, you know, the non-exciting part coming up, I thought you were talking about the audit. So I was ready to <laughs> um, As the township manager mentioned, we are your new auditors this year. This is our first year auditing um, the township. Um, and just when a new auditor comes in, um, it is, you know, a little more time consuming and a little more um, interesting. We got to gather a lot of background documentation and Kevin and his group um, were excellent to work with. Um, so there is a draft financial statement out there, which um, we're gonna kind of go through and talk about. There are a couple items to finish up yet, but we don't expect the township numbers to change. Um, we're finishing up a couple items on the library, which since the library comes in as a component unit, we need to finish that before we can issue it final. Um, so that'll, once it's issued final, then it can be posted on the township's website. Um, so I just kind of want to introduce the firm. My job is to introduce the firm. My name is Jeff Weiss. I'm the managing partner of Zelenkovsky Axelrod um, and the partner on this engagement. Um, we are a, what I call a niche accounting firm, an audit firm. We do about 95, 99% government and nonprofit work. Um, we don't go out there and audit for public companies. We don't do a lot of tax work. Um, so we do mostly government and uh, uh, nonprofit work and we work a lot with the counties. We work a lot at the municipal level. Um, so when this came out to bid, you know, we put in the bid and we were lucky enough to be awarded it. And we appreciate that opportunity to do the audit. Um, the other individuals that worked on the engagement, Debbie Bacon, who will speak next after me, is the principal on the engagement. Her job is to pretty much oversee the entire completion of the audit, um, manage the entire audit um, above her and uh, just kind of make sure that it gets done. And then Matt, Beinhauer, Matt Beinhauer, who also speak, is the supervising senior on the job. So he's our hands-on person. He's the person that's here. He's the person that dealt with Kevin most of the time. Um, so he's the individual that does a lot of the detail work. And then we also had some staff people um, work on the engagement as they go on. And we're also continuing to complete some of the other smaller engagements that we need to do as part of, the, um, as part of our proposal. Um, and they will be completed in the next couple months or next month or two. Um, so just that introduction, um, and I'm gonna pass it off to Debbie Bacon and let her do the detail work. Thank you, Jeff. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to be here. It's our pleasure to uh, present the results of the 2021 audit of the Township's financial statements. As Jeff said, it was, an, it was new to us, and so it was made it very interesting. Um, probably put a little bit more pressure on the staff to have to make copies and locate documents, but we appreciate everything that they did for us. So it went very smoothly, and we appreciate that. Um, now let me get acclimated here. Right out, right out. Got it. <laughs> um, the first thing we usually like to do is to make it very clear in the audit, audit process itself, what the responsibilities are for the township and what the responsibilities are for the auditor. Um, because they're very different and it's important that it's pointed out. 
ZA's responsibilities are to issue an opinion on the financial statements that are pursuant to an audit per that was conducted in accordance with US generally accepted auditing standards or US GAS and also the government auditing standards which are promulgated by the Comptroller General of the United States. It is also our responsibility to ensure that the financial statements are presented in accordance with the United States generally accepted accounting principles or US GAAP. Our responsibility is not to issue an opinion on internal controls. However, I will say that we do gain an understanding, we document your internal control systems, and then we will perform selected tests on those controls. <coughs> ZAs has some additional responsibilities with regard to supplementary information in the financial statements themselves. With regard to what's called required supplementary information, we do have very limited responsibility on that and we do not audit that. We do review it and that would include management's discussion and analysis, the budgetary comparison schedules, and the, bud the pension fund and OPEB fund schedules. And GASB has made it very difficult and it requires a lot of schedules and a lot of notes for those two plans. And so we do have to make sure that we understand all of those that information that's on the schedule. You also present combining schedules, which are the non-major governmental funds, and those are, are audited in accordance with U.S. gas. I'm going to go over the, uh, the additional responsibilities we have in light of how, what we were engaged to perform for the audits. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the status of these audits as well. As Jeff mentioned, the independent auditor's report on the township's financial statements is in draft form right now because we are waiting for the comp component unit financial statements, which are the library, William Jean's library, um, to be finished and reviewed by them. Um, we will be issuing that report as soon as we get approval from uh, the executive director of the library. We also are in, going to issue a report on the Barron Hill Fire Company's financials. However, they require some additional bookkeeping to be done, and so that is on hold for us. We can't do any more uh, because we do not do the bookkeeping. We, we do the audit. So there's a separation of the, the uh, amount of work that we can do or the type of work. Uh, as far as the Spring Mill Fire Company's financial statements, we've got a draft financial statement that's in the quality control review process at this point as well as the White Marsh Ambulance Association's financial statements. Those are also in toward the end of their, their completion, and then that'll go into our QC as well. We will be issuing to you, the board, a communication that regard, regarding the audit results and significant matters that we, should be, we are required to bring to your attention. That will happen on the day, on the time we, on the day we issue the financial statements final. There was no single audit, for just to just describe what a single audit is. This is an audit that's in accordance with the Office of Management and Budget um, re uh, requirements. It's called the Uniform Guidance. And it's where we're auditing the, the major federal programs that you have. You did not meet the threshold. <clears throat> you did not expend $750,000 of federal money this year. So you did not have that requirement. So there was no single audit for 2021. However, because of the ARP money um, and any other federal grants that you may have, it is possible for 2022 and we'll probably be uh, expecting it to be done in 2023. So it's really gonna depend on how you determine how, you determine how you're gonna spend the money and when. With regard to the township's responsibilities, the township is required to prepare the financial statements that are presented in accordance with US GAAP. They also, you also are responsible for preparing the required uh, supplementary information that I mentioned, the management's discussion and analysis, the budget comparison, and the pension and OPEB plan schedules. Now, ZA assists in the pre preparation of those documents, um, but we cannot completely prepare them. We, it has to be a coordinated effort. So again, we only perform limited procedures on those. And then it is also your responsibility to design 
and implement internal controls over the financial reporting and on compliance. I'm going to turn it over to Matt. He's going to go over some of the key financial uh, points. All right. So as Debbie said, I'm going to go over some of the results of this year's audit. So we did have an unmodified opinion on the financials this year, which means we had no findings and the statements were free from material misstatement in our opinion. There were some new um, significant accounting policies adopted this year. GASME number 84, did I switch? No, I didn't. Oops, sorry. Okay. GASME number 84 had to do with fiduciary activities. Um, there were presentation changes with the prior period adjustment related to the adoption of this. There's more detail in note 17 of the financial statements. There was GASB 89, um, which made interest costs related to construction will no longer be capitalized as a project cost. GASB number 93 related to the replacement of interbank offered rates and GASB number 98, which changed the name of the annual report to the annual comprehensive financial report. So moving on. So some of the key financial data over governmental activities. Total assets, liabilities, and net position were very similar to 2020. There was a $480,000 decrease in net position for 2021, which is essentially a break even. You will see uh, the American Rescue Plan funding for $960,000 is recorded as unearned revenue. This will be re recognized as revenue when it's used in 22. So some other highlights, there was a 2.7% increase in assessed value from 20 to 21. The net pension asset increased 1.7 million. The total liabilities increased 2.1 million. The general revenues increased 1.7 million. Operating grants decreased 1.2 million. And expenditures increased 2.9 million, primarily in the general government category. So on to the fund level statements, um, some of the changes in the fund balances. For the, no, sorry. For the general fund, it, was, it went down 261,000. For capital reserve, it went down 2.3 million. For open space reserve, it went down 317,000. For the non-major funds, it went up 76,000. And in total, there was a decrease in fund balances of 2.8 million. So the restricted fund balances for the non-major funds was 3.1 million. And some of those fund balances were assigned. Some of those assignments um, for the 2022 budget, 2.5 million was assigned. For business tax refunds, 500,000. For the OPEB liability, 512,000. For capital projects, 1.4 million, and for open space, 10.6 million. So here we go into detail about the American Rescue Plan, and Debbie touched on this a little bit. Um, the township got 960,000 in 21, and would expect to get the same in 22. And as Debbie mentioned, there's a potential single audit if expended uh, additional federal awards on top of the American Rescue Plan money. So here on the next one, we just have all the upcoming GASBs and what year they need to be implemented. Um, 87 is the big one. It changes the accounting and reporting for all leases. And um, when that comes due, we can assist the township in implementing this standard for next year. Any of the other ones, we can answer any specific questions if anybody has them. But um, 87, like I said, is really the big one. So with that, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to serve the township. We really want to thank Kevin and his staff, Kevin was a great help, and they made the audit pretty smooth, and we hope it would be even smoother next year. So with that, if anybody has any questions, I think we're good. Thank you, everybody, for your time um, on this. I, it's something that I think is important to note that we haven't had this kind of conversation at a meeting for several years. So, you know, in being transparent, I, I appreciate you coming tonight to present this. You know, it's been previously available on the website, but it's different when you are able to have a conversation and ask questions about it. So thank you for that. Um, does the board have any comments or questions? I've got a quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, you indicated early on that you did not issue or you will not be issuing an opinion on internal controls but that you perform tests on those controls. Could you tell us what kind of tests you perform? Well, we will, one of the things when we first come, and especially being a new client, one of the items we'll sit down with Kevin and his group, and the first thing is, how do you process transactions? How are they approved? Who approves them? Who signs them? So once we go through and had that, all those processes put together over all of your processes, including accounts payable, payroll, cash receipts, um, financial reporting, um, once we have those those processes developed, we'll then test and make sure that you're actually following those 
um, procedure. So that's who's signing, who's signing off on invoices before they're paid, who's signing paychecks, you know, who takes, who takes deposits to the bank, who reviews the deposits to ensure that what went to the bank matched what the receipts for the day. So those types of tests get done on an ongoing basis. We pull a sample of all the transactions over all of those different processes um, and then test those and make sure that your internal controls are operating. And if they wouldn't be operating, you would have a finding saying, you know, certain number of invoices that we selected, there was no approval of. Um, so items like that, but we didn't have any findings related to that. So the absence of a finding essentially indicates that we have controls that are working. That's correct. Yeah, and, and actually if we would, if we would talk to the people here and we would determine that we don't think your controls are good enough. You know, maybe, maybe somebody would say, well, we don't approve invoices. They just go to the accounts payable person and they pay them. You know, we would write that up as a finding, but somebody's approving the invoices and making sure that you did actually get the service or the item that you're being billed for. So yes, good. the absence of it um, means that we didn't find anything in your internal control that we had a problem with. And are the processes that you perform documented somewhere? Correct, yes. There are all the, we, we either develop narratives or checklists or things like that. So yes, they're all documented. So they'll be referenced in the report? Uh, they won't be referenced in the report, they're referenced in our work papers. In your work papers? In our work papers, which I'm just, and, yep. you know, Kevin can easily get them from us or he may have given them. Normally the client has, a lot of our clients have those written up, especially larger clients have those already written up. They provide them to us. Um, so they're actually their documents. So understood, thank you. Yep. If you were to have a finding, you know, it stands as it is, like you said, but can you offer suggestions on Correct. ways? Okay. Yep, and there, there's a difference between recommendations and, and findings. If we believe you can improve something, if maybe we didn't um, think it was a real significant problem, but you know, you could potentially improve it, we would have also made those recommendations, but we didn't note anything on that, and we didn't note any findings um, that were required under government auditing standards, which is one of the standards we have to follow when we're doing the audit, to provide that information to you if we find something. Thank you. Yep. And when you do the single audit, you actually do, will do more of that. So if, if in 2023 the single audit comes out, the single audit actually requires um, a lot more internal control and you actually do issue an opinion on good internal control, right? on compliance, internal control over compliance. So. Um, but that's only on your federal programs, if that happens to come up. But you'll see a little different opinion if that happens. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other board questions? Do we have any public questions, comments? I don't see any on, do you see any in the chat? Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to vote on this. Do I have a motion to accept the 2021 financial statement for White Marsh Township? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and the next uh, public discussion item tonight is a review of a subdivision land development 07-22 AIM Academy at 1200 River Road. This is a conditional preliminary final plan for a two-story building addition. They give me back the clicker. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Good evening. My name is Dan Rally. I'm here tonight representing AIM Academy. Some of the uh, members of the board may be familiar with AIM, but those, for those who may not be, they are a first through uh, 12th grade school that caters to uh, students with language-based learning differences, uh, including dyslexia and ADHD. Uh, we're here tonight requesting preliminary final land development approval for a small two-story addition over an existing parking lot area and installation of a rain garden. The additions uh, will contain additional space meant to enhance the school's science and tech lab offerings to its students, including robotics labs, drone labs, physics labs, and some chemistry labs as well. 
Uh, the addition is not anticipated to expand the school's enrollment. Uh, the school's thinking of this as a way to expand and enhance their curriculum and not an expansion of their student body. Um, if you turn to the screen, this is a rendering of the proposed addition. Uh, the glass building and then that middle brick building are both part of the additions and then that brick portion to the left of the screen is uh, part of the existing building. And this is Sam's place. This is a previous project that you guys approved, the last project that was in front of the board by AIM. And we're just putting it up here. A AIM has always really um, had a good working relationship with the township and uh, this was the last project in front of you guys. And this is the existing conditions plan for the project. So you'll notice two things you, you kind of notice off the bat is the, pro the property is significantly over parked. There's also a lot of uh, impervious coverage. They're non-conforming to the impervious coverage limits under the zoning code. And <clears throat> they're, ne <clears throat> excuse me, they're nearly double the required parking that they need. So the project is going to be cited, if you look uh, towards the top of the plan, exactly where the cursor is, where that 17 number is, it's gonna be placed over that existing parking lot. There's also about 30 spaces uh, towards the bottom right of the plan <clears throat> that'll be removed and replaced with a rain garden. Excuse and then- me, one, one second, Charlie, can you share the screen on Zoom as well? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, sure. I may have to get out of this for a second. Take your time. <clears throat> I'm always just so thrilled when it shows up on the screen. <laughs> I forget that part sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm seeing it on the laptop. I don't see it on the screens. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so this slide is just a uh, zoomed in um, uh, proposed Sorry, plan. Not, That's all right, do you want me to change it? Let's see, okay. So this is just a zoomed in portion of the proposed building addition on the plan. Uh, we're really just kind of squaring off the existing building and trying to utilize that existing impervious coverage. And uh, that's really our proposal here tonight. Uh, we're requesting a, a approval of preliminary final land development, as I said, and if the board has any questions, uh, I'm here to answer any. Jim Bannon, who's the civil engineer, Jennifer Crawford, who's the architect, and also Brian Currish, who's with the school. Uh, we're all here to answer any questions you would have. If I Are there could, any just waivers? Before, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Charlie. If I could, just before the board um, mm -hmm. proceeds, I just wanted to mention that this was before the Planning Commission on August 9th. Uh, the Planning Commission discussed this. We reviewed it in some detail, and the Planning Commission made two recommendations. One was in favor of the waivers that the applicant has requested, and the second was in favor of approval of the preliminary final land development plan. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what I was gonna ask. Yeah, so thank you for you mentioning go. that. I, I missed that. Thanks. Could you walk us through those waivers? Real sure, quick? absolutely. So if you're looking at the, the draft resolution under 7A, uh, the, the first two waivers actually, A and B, are really plan notation waivers. Uh, the first is to allow the project uh, to be approved as both preliminary and final at the same time. It's a relatively small project. Um, and that would speed up the, um, the process for the school. So that's the basis of that waiver. Uh, B is to uh, not show structures, building and structures within 500 feet outside the property lines. We did provide an aerial photo on the plans. Um, so we would ask for that waiver. Uh, C is uh, from the requirement to provide a traffic impact study. As I noted, we're not anticipating the school enrollment to grow. There's no, there shouldn't be any um, related traffic with the project, so we would ask for that waiver as well. Um, 
Uh, D, so this is a 40-foot cartway requirement. The, um, the street that the um, property is located on is non-conforming to that provision, so we would just ask to keep that non-conformity. Also, there's parking basically right up to the, to the property line in the cartway, so it, it would complicate um, you know, providing that cartway as well. Um, <clears throat> e is for street trees. Again, that parking issue, it goes to the property line, so there's not a lot of places to provide street trees. We are taking out, as I mentioned, about 30 parking spaces close to the property line, and that will be planted. The Shade Tree Commission did uh, review that, and um, they supported our, our plan. Uh, so F is <clears throat> buffer yards be provided between land developments. Uh, the building is attached to the existing building, and if you actually look up on the screen, there is a existing retaining wall behind that, and on top of that retaining wall, there is a fairly significant buffer that we're um, proposing to remain there. So we would ask for that waiver there. Under <clears throat> 8A, so this is a requirement for the top of any slope to be located within a minimum of five feet from the property line. This is con to construct the rain garden. This is really, we discussed this at the planning commission. This is really a, to the extent needed waiver. We think we can comply, but uh, it, it, we're close with the construction of the rain garden. So we would ask for that to the extent needed. And then uh, the requirement that storm pipes shall be 18 inches. I, I'm going to let in to allow us to use a 12 inch pipe. I'm going to actually let Jim uh, Bannon answer that one, provide the, the basis for that one. Sure. So the only pipe we have in here is in the rain garden and we're proposing um, to use, I think it's a 12 inch pipe. We're not proposing any new storm pipes in the township right away. And, and that's the, the end of the waiver list. And to reiterate, the Planning Commission recommended approval of all of the waivers, correct? That's correct. Correct. And none of them were objected to in any of the review letters either. Now, although I heard this prior at the Planning Commission meeting, could you just tell us briefly what you're planning to do with the rain garden, losing parking spaces, just generally in that, in that area? Uh, in, in what sense do you mean? Just, just your plans for use of the what it's going to look like um so there will be if I, so here's a kind of a zoomed in portion of that uh rain garden it's going to be there's about 30 parking spaces as i said it's going to be planted um there will be some opportunity for the students to use that area to to learn as well um so that's really the two joint basis for for the rain garden there the the storm water um, management and then also a space for a planted space for the kids to utilize great how is uh, Sam's place working out Very well. Very well, wonderful awesome excellent Sorry, that was a little side. No, absolutely. Any other board questions? Um, I was at the Shade Tree Commission meeting, and I know they're excited about the Rain Garden addition. I'm thrilled about it. Um, just a quick question about the use of the new addition. Will it be primarily classrooms or office space or? <clears throat> so uh, it's primarily labs. Um, okay. As I mentioned, kind of tech science labs. There will mm -hmm. be a. The school doesn't have a, a gathering space, uh, kind of auditorium style for, you know, larger classes and grades to assemble. So there will be some of that. There will be, you know, some associated classrooms as well. But that's that's the majority of the space. Thank you. Yep. Robotics clubs. Are you going to have Saturday? Robotics? I, I believe that's okay. the plan. Awesome. <laughs> that sounds fun. Any other board? OK. Um, any public comments? Seeing none, I think we are ready to move on this. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 2022-22, Grant 
granting conditional preliminary final plan approval for the subdivision land development 07-22 AIM Academy 1200 River Road for a two-story building addition onto the existing school. So moved. Second. Mr. Miller? Mr. McCusker? Yes. Ms. Toll? Yes. Ms. Tareen? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Chair Nestor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, our next ordinance is to consider the ordinance amendment for adding emergency notice for the snow and ice code. There it is. Do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 1016 amending chapter 103 article 4 uh, section 103-24 adding the provision for the declaration of snow and ice emergencies in White Marsh Township. So moved. Second. Thank you, Chair Nestor. This is, uh, it's coming. Snow is coming. Uh, so we want to get prepared. This is something that we've worked with our um, Fire Marshal and Emergency Management Coordinator, Nick Weaver, on. Uh, we have in our code, there's nothing changing. Uh, we have provisions in there that say when snow reaches a certain level, that during an even year, you park on the even side of the road, odd year, you park on the odd side of the road. Uh, but we really have nothing that triggers it. Uh, this is allowing for us to declare a snow emergency, which would trigger those regulations that are currently in our code. And that would be what the amendment for this uh, provision is, is to allow us uh, to declare snow emergencies and then those parking provisions would uh, be required. And you'll continue to remind us on which side of the road to park. Yes, 22, Ongoing. we're in, um, at least until December 31st, yeah. we're on the even. I'm sure we'll have to talk about that again. We'll, we'll be doing a lot of uh, PR around that <laughs> as well. Excellent. Any board questions, comments, public comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please roll, signify. Yeah. Oh, roll, roll call. call. Yep. Mr. Yep. McCusker? Yes. Ms. Toll? Yes. Ms. Tareen? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Chair Nestor? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so our next resolution here is, did I, am I skipping this? It is the MMO. Yep. Bad. Do I have a motion to adopt resolution 2022-23 approving the 2023 minimum municipal obliga obligation for the police and non-uniformed pension plans in the combined amount of $631,409.00? So moved. Second. Thank you, Chair Nestor. This is uh, a requirement that we do every September is to approve the minimum municipal obligation or MMO that is determined by the plan actuary and part of Act 205 based on the actuarial evaluation that's done every odd year. In this case, it's January 1st, 2021. Uh, we have two components to this. You have the police component, um, which is for $380,045. And then you have the non-uniform employee plan, which is $251,364 for the, uh, what you mentioned, the total of $631,409, about a 2.5% increase from what we was the MMO for this year in, in 2022. Uh, this is a requirement to be approved by September 30th of every calendar year. Thank you. Any board comments or questions? Any public comments? Seeing none, Mr. Miller? Mr. McCusker? Yes. Ms. Toll? Yes. Ms. Tareen? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Chair Nestor? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the bid award option A for trash, recycling, and yard waste collection and disposal to JP Mascaro and Sons for five years? with two one-year renewal options in the total amount of $23,588,388.00. So moved. Second. 
Mr. Miller. Thank you, Chair Nestor. This is uh, a trash recycling yard waste collection bid that was opened on Tuesday, August, August the 2nd. Uh, there was only one bidder from JP Mascara and Sons. Uh, the bid summary was actually reviewed uh, by the board at their August 4th departmental meeting. Uh, the current contract that we have with JP Mascara and Sons ends on December 31st, 2022. Uh, there are two one year renewal options on that. Uh, we decided as a township, the board directed staff to bid the, the contract to see uh, what the market would, would have. Uh, you have that before you. If we did decide, if the board did decide to, uh, to renew one of the one year, they would have to do that within 90 days in accordance with the current contract or no later than September 30th, 2022. The bid that you have before you for your consideration is a five year with two one year renewal options. Uh, the first two years, 2022 and 20, or I'm sorry, 2023 and 2024 are very similar in price to the current one-year renewals. The remaining uh, years do have large increases, uh, but they do seem consistent with other municipalities who have recently awarded trash recycling or, and or yard waste uh, collections. Uh, the board has two options tonight. Uh, the board can accept the current bid. Um, that would end the current contract on December 31st, 2022. The other option is to reject the current bid and agree to the renewal uh, with Mascaro by September 30th, 2022. There, there's two things for certain. Uh, one, Mascaro is going to be collecting our trash. And two, unfortunately, there is going to be an increase in terms of the trash fee. Uh, that'll be something that will have to be discussed in conjunction with our budget, uh, which we will be going through this fall, and the board will be considering uh, that trash fee along with the uh, overall budget at their December 2022 meeting. Thank you, Rick. Um, uh, I should mention uh, representative of Mascaro are here, Al Di Gennaro and JP Mascaro. Um, I don't know if they wanted to say anything, but they are also present this evening. Thank you for coming. Any board comments or questions? I, I just want to, wanted to ask a question about service uh, in regard in particular to the library. I know there have been some recent issues with pickup and about uh, policies and procedures with regard to your driver backing into the, you know, the area to pick up the bins and things of that nature. I just wanted to make sure those are resolved. Yes. Um, Rick and I had a conversation. Please go to the microphone. Sorry, um, my voice is loud, but I, I understand. I got to convey everything. Rick and I had a discussion with respect to the library last week, and immediately upon that, what I'm doing is evaluating the stop a to ensure they have proper service, which I'm sure they do. Sean does a great job of ensuring that there's adequate service. Uh, B, looking at the challenges in terms of access uh, when it's during hours and things and what we can do on that end to clean that up. Uh, and thirdly, I you may or may not know this, but the trucks that come in and pick up the homes for trash and recycling are different than the trucks that go in and pick up the dumpsters, say, at the library. And consequently, the supervision of those two routes is differently. But what I'm going to do and have done uh, is I'm putting the supervision of the containers within the township onto the residential side. He's in the township every day, uh, so he'll he'll be keeping a much closer eye on that, so we can address any issues pretty much immediately. Thank you. I appreciate you. that. Excellent. I appreciate prompt attention on that too. Any other questions? Anybody, any public comments, questions? Are we ready to vote on this? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, vote carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. We Thank appreciate you. the uh, long standing relationship we've had with the council. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the capital purchase of police vehicles to include one gas vehicle in 2022 and three hybrid police vehicles for 2023? So moved. Second. 
Mr. Miller. Thank you, Chair Nestor. I have uh, Police Chief Chris Wood, who I'm going to call upon. Um, this uh, is very easy to relate to um, in, as we read the paper and go through and, and hear about supply chain issues and hear about vehicles and vehicles difficult to get because of chip issues. Well, uh, we have lots of vehicles in our fleet. Uh, critical vehicles in our fleet are in our uh, police department and those vehicles that are used for uh, patrol 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we've had some disheartening uh, news on this um, and uh, wanted to go over kind of the situation that we're in so that uh, you could hear from the chief with regards to our vehicles and some of the decisions that we have to make quickly made and want to make sure that the board is in agreement or has any questions, they have an opportunity to ask them uh, to the chief or myself tonight. So I'll let the chief explain more of the details of this situation. Good evening. Uh, the 2022 budget for the police department included the purchase of uh, three new police vehicles. Uh, one being uh, a gas powered uh, vehicle for our canine unit and the other two vehicles being hybrid patrol vehicles. Uh, we had the budget approved. In January, we placed the orders for those cars through our supplier, Hundrew Motor Company, for Ford vehicles. And about a half hour before I walked in to present my preliminary budget for the 2023 year, we were notified by Hundrew via, uh, from Ford via Hundrew that they had canceled our uh, two hybrid vehicles. Uh, for supply chain and chip issues and they were not doing anything in terms of moving those orders to 2023 or honoring those uh, though they did advise us that they would very gladly raise the price so uh, at the time uh, we we're aware that the the gas vehicle for K9 were scheduled to have delivery now normally when you order in January you receive your vehicles May uh, they're advising us we should have it by the end of September. So we have one vehicle at Upfit, but we have two other high mileage, well, one high mileage vehicle that we wanted to replace. We have another vehicle that's been out of service since the end of 2021 when it was involved in an accident, we totaled the vehicle. And we were going through replacement through the budget process instead of going through a, a replacement purchase at the end of fiscal 2021. So, we were also notified that if we wanted to have Ford hybrid vehicles in 2023, we had three days to order them. Otherwise, they were closing the bids and we could wait till 2024. As part of the police department's uh, fleet program in cooperation with some of the initiatives here in the township, we've been trying to transfer over from fully gas powered vehicles to hybrid vehicles. We've had discussions that uh, there aren't uh, complete electrical vehicles that are uh, approved or ready for patrol usage. So we've gone to the highest standard that we can with the hybrid vehicles. Based on Ford's telling us that we had two days to decide, uh, we had discussions, the township manager, myself, Mr. Barron from the finance department and the public works director, Mr. Fields, about the needs of not only the police department, because we work to replace our high mileage vehicles due to industry standards and our insurance companies, uh, requ not requirements, their, their guidance on when vehicles should be in service with how many miles and how many uh, engine hours, because with police cars, miles driven and engine hours don't really match up the way your family car would because it's rare that you would sit and idle and your vehicles aren't used 24 seven normally uh, and which a lot of our high mileage first out patrol vehicles are. So we had a discussion realizing that we had planned to get three vehicles this year. At the time it looked like we were getting one vehicle. We decided to immediately place the order for three vehicles next year in the hope that we won't be told again that there's chip and supply, there's no guarantee. But to make sure that not only are we replacing the police vehicles, but we also have an overall township plan. A lot of times 
after cars go from being primary police vehicles, they're used in other parts of the township, whether it's by my staff and administration, park and rec administration for the township. So uh, we decided that we should place that order. Uh, we weren't sure where we were gonna go uh, because my preliminary budget for next year also requested three vehicles. So instead of six, we're now down to four. We made these decisions, we're moving forward, and then I received notification uh, through a contact, someone who had an inside source somewhere that there would be a gas-powered vehicle available to the township if we were willing to step forward and say we wanted to purchase it immediately, and it, it could be in as soon as the end of next week. Uh, it kind of goes backwards from the plan we had, but we don't know what the future holds. We have the parts for the totaled vehicle sitting on a shelf at our upfitter, uh, the people who outfit the police cars, waiting to go in. So we've been working for a year, short one police car, which only compounds putting more mileage on the other cars. So based on all the information we had, the budgeted money for three cars this year, we were gonna to try to get three cars next year. We sat down and we discussed it. If we, if, when the K-9 car arrives and if we're able to secure this other gas vehicle, then we're, and we move forward in our planning for 2023, we're only really one car behind, which we, it's a lot easier to work on one car behind than it is two and three cars behind mainly for the police department, but also for the overall uh, fleet management for the township. So again, it wasn't, though decisions were made quickly, uh, there was a lot of discussions between uh, the people involved. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, the older the cars get, the higher the repair costs, there's a whole, uh, you know, poorer mileage, we can go into all that, but uh, um, that was a, a decision we didn't have a lot of time to make. They didn't give us many options, and we're just trying to keep on, on par with what we need and also respect as best we can um, the switch to hybrid vehicles and how that affects the agreement with the emergency uh, or the uh, environmental advisory board and our uh, White Marsh Township moving towards zero emissions in the future. So that's where it's where we stand today and hope that uh, the vehicles that we want to get actually arrive. And we'll keep uh, working and looking through that. We were, we had, we kept being told it, they were coming. So we were kind of caught off guard. So. So the terms and conditions of our order permit the dealer to cancel without any penalty whatsoever. There's nothing because it comes down from Ford. There's, they, they're, yeah, and and I've spoken with other chiefs about this, and we're all in the same boat, and uh, we're kind of. There's not really many other suppliers. There's there's some issues with that. Who you can actually get police vehicles, the ones we use, and no, and they didn't even they don't even promise to prioritize those. You know, uh, like, hey, we'll move this forward, but understand, nope. It's like, ah, good luck. Which really caught us off guard. I mean, sure. never experienced that. I've experienced cars being slow to arrive due to, due to other issues, but in my career, I've never, uh, never mind, you know. And we had signed purchase orders and had done everything that we always do, so. Any? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. Not helpful. That uh, naturally the, the the gas car that's mentioned for 2022, there's budgeted monies for that. Mm -hmm. Next year we're we're not approved yet. We were you know so we just wanted to make sure the board was aware we're not just trying to go out and willy nilly buy cars. But um, when you start getting in our business car poor, it, it doesn't work well. Thank you. Yep. Any board questions, comments? Any public comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. So we have a few hold harmless or a hold harmless agreement here. Is this Germantown, East Germantown, or Bethlehem? That is East Germantown. Mm -hmm. Thank you for whoever caught that. Thanks. Thank Sorry you. about that. You're welcome. That's that's. I will admit that's a cut and paste error on my part. No worries. Do I have a motion to approve a hold harmless agreement for the? Improvements in the ultimate right of way at 515 East Bethlehem Pike. No. German Germantown German Pike. German. I just reversed it for East Germantown Pike. Um, and that's it. So moved. Second. Mr. Gotten Plain? Yes, thank you. This is um, related to um, a pending land development plan uh, that will be coming before you hopefully very shortly for 5 and 15 Germantown Pike owned by the same owner. Um, 5 is currently an occupied um, office building which is here in the background. Uh, 15 is this building closer on the right which is in um, dilapidated condition but structurally sound. The applicant is um, has taken off some unsafe building additions and we'll be um, expanding the building to the rear and rehabilitating the entire building um, for off additional office space. There's also expanded parking occurring on the lot with five Germantown Pike, which will serve both of the lots. Um, that's in the way of background. You'll hear more when the land development comes in front of you. But the land development review kind of pointed out the fact that much of the, what you're looking at is currently in the ultimate right of way and there's never been any legal recognition of that. Um, the fronts of the buildings are in the ultimate right of way, a portion of the front of the parking is in the ultimate right of way, this fence that I'm sure you'll hear about during discussion of the land development are also, is also in the ultimate right of way. Um, and this porch um, platform that I'm showing you here on 15 is also in the ultimate right of way. The only difference that will occur when the um, land development is uh, implemented in terms of what happens in the ultimate right of way is that this porch will be improved with a portico roof and columns. Um, otherwise, uh, it's the same. This is uh, one of the land development plan plans that shows this is the expanded 15 Germantown, 5 Germantown over here, this is the expanded parking lot, the yellow line being the ultimate right of way, showing you <coughs> that the front and porch of 15, the front of the existing and proposed parking lot, um, and all these other improvements already in the ultimate right of way. So most of this is just recognizing what's there and anticipating um, the rehabilitation and the land development and we felt that it was appropriate to get a hold harmless agreement um, on the books and record it uh, to acknowledge this. Um, Krista did a review and determined that the, there was no site distance <coughs> impediment by what's there now and what's going to be changed with the porch. Uh, as a result, we are recommending approval of the whole Thomas agreement. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you both. Any board comments or questions? None. Any public comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Vote carries. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve expenditures totaling $649,942.89? Payroll totaling $719,123.69 for August of 2022. So moved. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Motion carries. We have a revised agenda. The first is to consider a resolution authorizing the grant DEP award. 
I know Rick is going to explain this. Do I have a motion to adopt <coughs> resolution 2022-24 authorizing Chair Laura Boyle Nestor or Township Manager Richard L. Meller Jr. as officials authorized to execute all agreements for the DEP 902 grant awarded to White Marsh Township in the amount of $267,107.00. Second. The easiest way to explain this is this is the easiest way for us to get the money. Yes. Uh, approving this. <laughs> um, yeah. This is Technical the issues to related to electronic yeah, signatures. We, we can't go through what we went through yep. before. So no. if we pass this resolution, you or I can sign off on it and the money comes to us. Excellent. Makes perfect sense to me. Any questions? No. All good. Resolution, Mr. Miller? Mr. McCusker? Yes. Ms. Toll? Yes. Ms. Tureen? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Chair Nestor? Yes. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve a hold harmless agreement for a fence in the ultimate right of way at 4037 Joshua Road? So moved. Second. Charlie. Thank you. Uh, this is a slightly simpler hold harmless yep. agreement, a little bit more typical of what we normally see. Um, this is at the corner of Joshua Road and Marianne Road. Uh, this is 4037 Joshua Road is the address of the property. And the proposal is to put a fence um, around a portion of the property, which includes fencing along both frontages. Um, and, there, and as a result, they both frontage fences would be within the ultimate right of way. We're talking about a four foot post and rail fence here. Uh, this is, this is um, as it is the site plan that was submitted with this application. Again, this is Joshua Road. This is Marianne. And this was reviewed by the traffic safety unit of the police department. Their requirement was that the fence had to be at least 11 feet behind the curb line on Joshua Road and, uh, to allow for proper sight distance of vehicles coming out of Marianne onto Joshua Road. It's the same requirement that they had when this property across the street, across Marianne, which is fenced, mm -hmm. um, and they also went through the whole harmless process. Uh, so we're looking at the same requirement. Um, this fence, as proposed, is 11 feet inside the curb line and therefore um, meets the requirement and we're recommending approval of the whole Thomas. Thank you. Okay. Any board questions, comments? Public? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Do I have a motion to authorize the escrow release number two for Robbins Golf Holding LLC 27 East Germantown Pike in the amount of $70,933.50? So moved. Second. Krista. Yeah. This is the second escrow release request for this development. Um, if you recall, this is the historic building at 27 East Germantown where they're rehabbing the front and then building a small addition and a parking lot in the rear. Um, the items are mostly erosion and sediment control related and stormwater related. Uh, we inspected the site and found them to have been constructed in accordance with the approved plans and recommend the release. Um, and after this release, there will be $128,235.25 still remaining in escrow. Very good. Thank you. Any questions? Public, board, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. That brings us to our public comment period. Seeing none, board comment? None? I'd like to announce that we did have executive session tonight where we discussed personnel and litigation. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, White Marsh. Thank you.